So please, please keep Mother Antonia in your prayers and, her, and the work that she's doing and the people that are with her in, in her sir, the servants of the 11th hour, the work that they, they are doing is so important. Uh, there's so much more I could tell you, but I want Mother Antonia to speak to you. I just know you'll be blessed. I know I was. She's, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> So if I have to suddenly sit down, you'll understand. Those things that happen when you're in your 80s, you know. <laughs> but I'm here from the Mesa prison in Tijuana. That's been my home for 33 years, uh, five days a week. Now on Saturday morning, I go to the convent and stay until Monday morning early so I get back on time to send my son to court. And it's, that's my mission, that's my life, and it extends way beyond. I want to stay and tell you that all that I have to say today, I pray the Holy Spirit is in you and in me, and that all that I have to say will be the honor and glory of God. And I say it in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, you started out singing that song about heaven. My hearing's not so hot, <laughs> but I, I heard the word heaven many, many, many times, and I heard uh, John uh, Wooden talk, he died last night, apparently. And I was blessed to be the, uh, the speaker when they awarded him with the Caring Award. Mm -hmm. They came from Washington, D.C. because he wasn't able to make the trip. He was a beautiful man, loving man. And I don't know much about basketball, but I can tell you he was a great man. He was a great human being. <laughs> and they asked him about death. And I heard it this morning. I don't have a television in the, in the prison, but I heard him say, they said, are you afraid of death? He said, oh, of course not. Of course not. He's, that's great. That's something wonderful that's going to happen. Something wonderful. He, he, he had only one girlfriend in his life. I don't know if you know this personal story. It was very touching that every month on the day that his wife died, he wrote a letter, love letter to her and put it on her pillow. Uh -huh. And that, she died in, in 1985. Mm -hmm. wow. And that they asked him, would you share this great love you have with others, how, how a love lasted so long that you met when you were young and never there was another love in her life or yours. And he said, well, I'll try to. You come back next year. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the writer or friend came back a year later, later and he said, it's too soon. <laughs> it was only 15 years since she died. And he, had, he couldn't talk about it. But now he knew that he was dying. And he's going to meet her. You know, there's a God, he was happy. He brought happiness to people. He respected people. He was humble. He didn't think he was the greatest of anything in the world. It's been God's child that been gifted to be able to do incredible things because of the incredible people around him. You know, and that's the truth, the truth of all of us. You know, that one, of that one of the things that I thought, all the songs are reminding me of the things that I talk about usually. And uh, there's so many things to say when you've been in prison so long. When he talked about death, and you talked, you talked about heaven, which remind me of John uh, Wooden's death, remind me of Paul Lundquist, her father, that was my beloved Paul, and that served the mission in Tijuana with such love and such hardship and such pain, even in his dying days. I think that he came down to the house Campos de San Miguel, loaded down with food and clothing and things, he had a great love of the poor, and um, that he uh, would sometimes not be able to get out of the car because he was too weak. And the women would run out and help him into a chair where he'd collapse, and, and, and he'd be dripping wet. And they'd say, and he learned to like a potato pan, a potato ta tacos and peanut butter. <laughs> he said, delicious, it's delicious. And they'd make him that and bring it over the chair. And they'd say, well, we don't think he'll be back again. And the next day he'd be back. And I think he came very close to his dying day. Maybe it was two weeks, maybe not much more than two weeks before he died. He still had something to give. There were still people hungry. There were still prisoners that didn't have a shirt. It was still somebody that needed something he could get and he could bring down. And he came down. He came down and he kept going. And there's his sister over there. And he, and he died that way. He was a man that knew what he needed in life. 
he knew that he didn't need something, something. Most people, you know, I read where, you know, you all know the story where uh, Peter and, and uh, John went to the, the temple and the man put his hand out that had been crippled for 18 years. He was waiting for something. <clears throat> and Peter told him, silver and gold we do not have. But what we have we give to you. Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, pick up your mat and walk. In the love of Jesus. Not mine, not mine, not Peter's. But in Jesus Christ, and he did. He was waiting for something, and instead he got someone. And many people are waiting for something. And what they really need is someone. We all need that someone. And the one is Christ. Is our Lord. Now, if any of you are not Catholics or Christians, I believe that God is the God of all children. Now, people can believe how they want to. But I have seven children. I have 25 great-grandchildren now. And I, I love all of them. I don't see them very often, but the two or three times a year I see them. They love to see me because Grandma always has $10 for each one. <laughs> That's my big deal over here. They want something. And, uh, but uh, the point is that my father said, I love my children, my three children. Each one has special talents. Each one is special. I know one thing. I couldn't choose between them. That one uh, grandfather said to his uh, daughter that he just had her seventh child, uh, isn't that too many? You're having too many children. You're having too many children. She said, well, which one do you want to eliminate? <laughs> <laughs> which one do you want than the ones we have? <laughs> and so that's, but that's a good example. And so sometimes we're too, we too, uh, are, and you talked about words. She spoke about words. Her, words do destroy. In prison, in all the years I've been there, I've never found anyone that wasn't worthwhile. In fact, I never found anybody that wasn't incredibly good. They, well, that's, well, how can you say that? You, I say it because it's true. It's true. The goodness you learn. You don't, you know, I don't struggle. It I, I, isn't a big deal that I do. It isn't some magnificent thing, as so many people think it is, because it's, it's easy for me. It's easy for me to be where I am. It, the work is getting hard for me to do. But I don't find the men and women in prison anything but uh, my privilege to serve them, to wash their feet. Isn't that the way Jesus did? He acted as a servant and washed their feet. And that's what the Lord sent me to do, to wash their feet, maybe verbally, maybe spiritually, maybe with a smile, maybe by just holding them. And dying, you talked, uh, just before I came up here, two men died in the last week. And the one was dying in the prison, and I said to him, I was leaving, I didn't know he was gonna die so suddenly, but I said, Our, uh, and we prayed together, and he smiled, he was dying of cancer, he was an HIV patient, he was young. And I said, are you afraid to die, darling? And he said, in Spanish, of course, and he said, uh, oh no, I'm not afraid to die. Oh no, mother, oh no, mother. I said, I'm so glad. He said, because I asked him, is there anybody you haven't forgiven? Oh no, mother, I've forgiven everyone. I pray that God's forgiven me. I believe God forgave me, because he died for me. And, and angels are gonna come for you, Jose. Angels are gonna come for me. I just imagine that in my mind. And that's gonna be so wonderful, and so soon, mother. Mama, so soon, and that's the way they die. They die, and nobody is afraid. Mm -hmm. Nobody I've ever seen die. I've seen I don't know how many, but at least two hundred people die. I've never seen one afraid, not one. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen one, and they all ask for what you'll ask for. They don't say, God, please give me justice. They say, God, mercy, Lord, mercy. That's the word. That's the word you want for your children and your grandchildren and your, your brothers and your sisters and everyone else. And to, to forgive. You know, if I could give you a gift today, like you've given us here, I think that's a gift I'd leave with you. If there's anyone you haven't forgiven, don't go 